so this is the swale where there, there had been uh, some years ago there was a willow tree here and this is really the natural swale this is the natural stream line here and it's not bearing very much because the overburden is largely uh, being diverted over here, which is just, uh, it, it is what it is, but here it is. Now there's also a uh, good deal of water that flows down from here and uh, there's uh, you can see it through the trees there there's a new house up there um, at least one I think actually there are two new houses up there and uh, they're going to be uh, contributing to some drainage runoff but here you see roughly again, you know, the natural swale is insisting, or natural uh, gully, you know, the low point, it's just insisting on its existence. Here it is, you know, and uh, they try all kinds of stuff to, to block it. Uh, but here it is. So, um, you know, naturally, it would flow down that way. But it's being diverted. Look at our beautiful cattails, and they're just so nice. These dawn redwoods are going to create a whole interesting thing as they mature. There's another one down there. It's already quite large. And it's only like, it's only been here for like five years maybe. And these guys get to be very substantial. Not sure what this is all about. This it's hard to believe that this is from the tree removal the other day, but maybe it is that 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 uh, wipe out there. Um, they certainly were over over there. And here's our forlorn garden. It'll seem less forlorn when those start flowering. And these are out of control. Look at these guys. Those are, uh, these are goldenrods. Look at them, they're magnificent. Um, and unhappily, or ha whatever, uh, it is what it is, as they say. Um, these evening primrose have been battered with all kinds of different things this year, including our spectacular uh, herd of Japanese beetle. Um, and this is potatoes. They really need to be dug out um, and 
also weeded. Daylilies. Peach tree. It's an interesting... I think that's what it is anyway. Some kind of fruit tree. And our... Um, pawpaws. Some of these are doing quite well. One got completely wiped out by the by the heat. They were they were all very very troubled by the sun, and uh, they're also uh, the, these two in the front, in particular, are very root bound. This poor tree has been bashed and battered, and so many things happen to it, and it keeps going. Red bud. Crepe myrtles here getting to be decent size. Uh, there was an Atlanthus here that was enormous and uh, uh, partly fell and then was cut out. We've got some nice, uh, nice Japanese maples going here. But here's the uh, this Dawn Redwood, and it's already really defining the area under, and I don't know what's going to become of this poor pussy willow that's also been very much uh, appreciated by the Japanese beetles. I guess that's who we've got here. Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't have thought that they would enjoy willow as much as they seem to. Here, here again, another big tree that had to be uh, removed. And uh, kind of surprised it didn't take this polonia. Um, and obviously, there's a good deal of cleanup still to happen. But, you know, here's an ash, here's an ash, here's an ash, there's an ash. Everywhere is a frickin' ash. They just, that's all they planted here, it seems, sometimes. But look at our great little, you know, it's not quite a clear cut, but it's sure, it's sure a big change. Oh, this is where they stack the logs. They had a big stack of of uh, the, the largest trunks. That's why that bark and that's sort of like almost like a board lying there. But see here again, natural gully runs across there. It's hard to deny it, you know. Um, this is a diversion. This is, this swale is a diversion of the natural flow, which would actually be over there. And this is one of the strangest arrangements of macadam on a private place that I've ever seen and the the net and very nearly the gross effect of the thing is uh, that all the water is channeled into a very narrow um, current 
which is here, and then it goes down onto the neighbor's place instead of just charging into the stream, which is what it would have done naturally up there. So all this water naturally would be discharging down there, except for a little bit that's from the slope. But, but basically, it would all be in the stream. But here, we're channeling it towards our neighbor's house and have been for as long as I've been here. You know, and you look at these kinds of things, now this is like internal of this property, but uh, if, if this were a public access uh, roadway, say, and uh, we had this kind of a uh, situation of the, the water channeling, you know, there's a deep channel there. I'm standing in a channel right here, which does seem to have some vegetation in it, but uh, in, the, in the past, this has sometimes been eroded just by an event like this, just a single, you know, like a two hour uh, gully washer. And uh, just look at this stuff coming out here. And, you know, we live with it. This is, this is what we got. But I know that the, the neighbor isn't real thrilled, uh, you know, to have his lawn uh, gullified every time. And, you know, the thing that's disappointing about it is if you look at the natural landscape, uh, he, sh he, he really should not be receiving this quantity of water. There, there should be some water flowing down here, and you can see that this is a kind of a, again, a natural gully, but it's carrying much more water than, than, uh, than it did before this swale arrangement was constructed, whenever that was. I, I, I think it might have been as much as 40 years ago that they did that. Okay, so if we, if we just kind of conservatively say, 40 years ago rather than 50. Okay. We're back to about the time when there was the Superfund uh, Conestoga Mill Creek project. You know, that was in its early stages. Uh, I would say, you know, we're going back to about the point that uh, I can remember seeing like just the Conestoga was like a dead stream. Okay, but here, like this, this water along here, um, this is kind of what you would expect. And this stream should probably actually be carrying a good deal more water. Like most of this should actually be over here. Naturally, naturally it would be. And it wouldn't necessarily be eroding this all that much uh, more or differently. It might be moving a, a little bit back and forth, but there would be, um, uh, I think naturally it would kind of uh, uh, tend to be so, sort of slower in its erosion, even though it would be carrying more water. But uh, also a lot of this water would be absorbed you know, if there were trees and things that are now impervious surface. So that's our big complaint about that sort of thing. And, and here again, you can see that this goes down onto the road. Now imagine, as it does happen, that this comes down here in March and it freezes overnight. And that's ice all across the road, all down the road. Now we've got two neighbors involved because that's down to, uh, to Mike's place. So this water that's coming down here, which naturally would be flowing through this stream and out through this culvert, which can definitely carry more water than it is. You know, this has been a big, big storm and this has not reached its capacity.
okay? So it could carry that water over there through here, but it's being diverted by uh, the construction that happens to be on the property, which is 169 address. Uh, and I think that basically it's a carryover from the previous uh, previous owner who I understand also was an old farmer who uh, at one point at any rate uh, farmed one of the properties that's up here, one of the farms. And, and in fact, this whole uh, area between Slackwater Road and Long Lane was uh, was their farm. This is the story. I don't know. Uh, I haven't gone to the register of deeds, you know, to look into that. Wow. Look at this. Uh, this is ragweed, which I will remove, but it is, it's magnificent. I mean, it's growing really beautifully. It's just, uh, I'm terribly, terribly uh, bothered by ragweed pollen. So that's all going away. We have our kind of practical limits to uh, to our love of all things. So here again, uh, it's kind of interesting. They leave the wood, um, and. Uh, Here's some stone. You know, periodically, I come along here and I collect stone. You may have seen the videos of me collecting stone here. Um, and my main reason for doing that is uh, to have building material. You know, there's another another tree. I think that those were ashes. Those were both ashes. It makes perfect sense that they would cut them. They're dead. You know, uh, basically all the ash trees in this neighborhood is are dead. Uh, this, yeah, I was gonna say, maybe this is a, this is a hackberry right here, but this one I think is an ash. These two that are dead there, those are ashes. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, there's so just so many trees all dying at once. It's scary, actually. It's freaky. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like too many humans have been going down this path, but uh, there's, there's the, the top of the pawpaw patch. You can see a lot of them are just little nubbies on the ground. Don't you love when you get that squeak? I don't know about you, but for some reason that always makes me think of the beach. And that always seems to be where it ha that's the, either that or like going canoeing or tubing or something like that, you know, it's some kind of aquatic water thing uh, an aquatic water thing as opposed to some other kind of water thing 
Oh, well, there's some more of the uh, of that ash tree from up there. But it's over there. Okay. I wonder whether this, that's mugwort growing sort of halfway up and then some, uh, oh, I don't know what that stuff is, horse tail grass or you know, it's meadow something, uh, and the uh, great mullen verbascum thapsus there at the kind of upper level. but. I think lower than that, it gets zapped with the uh, uh, defoliant that they spray. Some form of Roundup. And along here, they hit with a with a mower, you can kind of see where the mower goes. A little bit of flocks. Some years we've had a lot of flocks. This year, I hardly saw any. to be a really, really substantial rain event for multiple days and, you know, like a big scale hurricane, I think, uh, to to overburden that um, culvert. So why is this water coming down on the road? It's because the folks who lived in 169 didn't want the water coming right by their house. So they shifted it and uh, they shifted it the only way they could on their own property uh, because I think if they had diverted it that way up here they would have been they would have had to cross over onto the neighbor's property and so I think they channeled it this way but uh I'm kind of surprised that they didn't like put a culvert up here, which uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we come up here, or as I come up here, but you get to virtually come along. Now look at these things. These are enormous. These were planted by the current, uh, is actually since I lived here, these plants were, were planted here. Uh, look at the water coming down on the side of the trunk there. Um, These were planted here, I think, about 12 years ago. Which doesn't mean that they're 12 years old. I don't know how old they were when they were 
and they were planted, they, they might have been that old again. You know, so they might be 24 years old, but wow, you know, if that's a 24 year old tree, just think what it's going to be as it gets older. Um, you know, these sycamores are big, big trees, and these are not full grown, but they're going to be overshadowed by that by those dawn redwoods. So anyway, um, okay, here you can really hear the rushing of the water. That's because there's stones here. It's, it's flowing over stones in part. But you see how it's being diverted down from the road. Okay. And if you look across there, there's nothing, there's, there's basically no way that anything can flow down from there into here because there's a bank. Okay, and there's the slope over there. So all of this water flowing through there is coming from this stream and the diversion of this stream that's up here. This isn't, this isn't bringing in any substantial water down. This is all from up here. My point is that from, from, from the road, up to here, all the water that's flowing on the road, or uh, anyway, from here down to the confluence with the, with the other lane, all of the water that's flowing down here, uh, for all intents and purposes, is from, uh, from 169 property and most of it is really from above these houses. So, all right. So you don't want it flowing down naturally as it would right next to the houses, because it is, it would be right next to the house. Okay, which at Falling Waters, it doesn't bother them, but here that would, I guess that would be a problem. But here you see, here, there's a natural gully. There's the house. The house is up, upstream, uphill, up this. If a culvert were made here, So that the water from this swale went underneath the road, underneath the lane, coming out on this side and flowing down. There would be none on the lane. This would mean in that icy weather in March that you did not have melt water and flow water from rain going down the lane and covering the surface of the lane with slush and ice. Instead, it would be flowing this way, down to the stream. It would not flow out onto Slackwater Road. It would not go onto the neighbor's properties, plural.
It is a somewhat expensive fix, but if the neighbors are concerned about it, which occasionally they do seem to express their concern, then uh, they might be persuaded to contribute to the project to run a culvert underneath the lane.